something about the size of the stones at Stonehenge that reflects why the monument was built. The great appeal of Stonehenge, the size of these huge stones. It's a place to celebrate, a place to worship, a place to acknowledge something greater than what is human, something bigger than what we are, bigger than the tribe, bigger than the community. It follows that the size of the stones then might have been designed to tower over the worshippers, reminding them of an omnipresent God, just like cathedrals through the ages. Stonehenge, as a religious site, is also a theory favoured by Mike Pitts. They weren't accountants. Stonehenge was not a housing estate. It was a religious monument. Perhaps the mountain, the Braselli Hills, was a sacred mountain, and there was something about the rocks on it that, when they brought them to Salisbury Plain, allowed them to bring something of that magic into their own world. There are so many possible explanations, and whatever was going on, I think we can be pretty sure that there were many of these things happening. All this new information starts to reveal that ancient Britons at the time of Stonehenge might not be the primitive people we once thought them to be. In the probe into the origins of Stonehenge, it's been established that its builders had solved difficult engineering problems and coordinated construction on a massive scale. Have the abilities of these ancient Britons been underestimated? Can we build a more complete picture of these people to reveal the truth about the builders of Stonehenge? In April 2003, construction workers unearthed human remains at Boscombe Down, just three miles from Stonehenge. Flint arrowheads found with the bodies earned them the nickname the Boscombe Bowman. Could they offer evidence about the people who were alive when Stonehenge was built? Andrew Fitzpatrick is from Wessex Archaeology. To start with, it didn't look all that special. It was only as the excavation was done that we realised there was something very unusual about the grave. Skeletons have been uncovered near Stonehenge before, but until now they have been either foreign visitors or much later bodies buried many years after it was constructed. This new grave was quite different. So what does this excavation reveal? There are hundreds of bones, suggesting multiple burials, something not usually known from this period. Who were these individuals? Could their remains hold the key to unlocking the mystery of who built Stonehenge? The next clues about this unusual burial came from Jackie McKinley, a forensic pathology expert. One of the first things I do when I get material like this into the laboratory is lay everything out. And with quite a lot of work, it was possible to work out that we had parts of seven individuals. Unfortunately, the condition of the bones means that a genetic test is out of the question. Is there another way of uncovering the relationship between the bodies? The breakthrough comes from a new test. It's capable of identifying the likely location where people were born by identifying chemical markers absorbed in the teeth. Could the forensic teeth test tell us if the bodies had come from the same place? The technique traces chemicals taken up by tooth enamel during childhood to reveal where someone was brought up. These traces come from the food we eat, the water we drink, and from the general environment. The teeth enamel is tested for two separate chemicals, levels of oxygen isotopes and the isotopic levels of the element strontium. Each reading is compared to a map of known levels of oxygen and strontium and reveal the locality that has left these chemical fingerprints in the teeth. It 
it seems logical to think that the bodies dug up near Stonehenge might have originated in the local area. But the teeth tests reveal an unexpected result. The people buried thousands of years ago in this mass grave had all grown up in a location more than 200 miles away from Stonehenge. They had originated in South Wales, the location from where the Stonehenge bluestones had all been hauled. It's an incredible finding. Strong evidence that the men and the stones originated from the same place. And offers a tantalizing suggestion that these bodies were involved in transporting the stones from South Wales and possibly in the very building of Stonehenge itself. But this quest is still not over. If these men built Stonehenge, is it possible to actually see what the builders of Stonehenge might have looked like? Taking the most complete skull, we conduct a unique experiment on a 4,300-year-old Stonehenge man. His bones are scanned into a computer, creating a three-dimensional image of all the skull fragments. And the computer calculates just how to rearrange the pieces of bone into an anatomically correct order. Then it is up to the facial reconstruction team to try and assemble the jigsaw puzzle into a fully formed face. Here at the University of Manchester, experts use this new technique. Skilled facial anthropologists use advanced software to build layers of muscle. The system allows the operator to feel the contours of the skull, layer by layer, to create a three-dimensional model. It takes many weeks of computer time, but finally, the mysterious and long-dead Welshman is ready to be revealed. We are about to become the first people for over 4,000 years to see the features of one of the men who may have built Stonehenge. The journey to uncover the builders of Stonehenge has ranged from England's Salisbury Plain to the mountains of Wales. We have seen how ancient Britons could have hauled vast slabs of rock miles across land and sailed them across water to construct the monument. Examination of ancient graves has offered a face and shed new light on the origins of the peoples who might have come from far and wide to build Stonehenge. What the new science is telling us is that people were moving about not just within Britain, but clearly all over Europe. And that one, I think, imagines now that the construction of Stonehenge would have been known about at least all over southern Britain, and that this was almost part of the purpose of it for the people who built it. It was a statement about their power. And yet we still remain with an enduring mystery and many different theories as to why it was built. The only certainty remains, the stones themselves, a monument that has stood proud and immovable for thousands of years, an incredible monument to the incredible ingenuity of the human mind.